I want you to know that if you're in this camp, if you're like, I'm constantly setting financial goals for myself, but then for some reason I never hit them and you're just feeling really discouraged and overwhelmed and frustrated with the financial goal setting process, I feel you, but I've also got you. Welcome to my channel. My name is Paige Pritchard and I am a money mindset and management coach who helps women reach their full financial potential, not only through the management of their finances, but also through the management of their minds. Let's talk about financial goal setting today, shall we? I love the financial goal setting process. If you give me a goal, I'm going to go out and I'm going to hit it, or I'm going to try my best to hit it. But I will say that I know that not everybody feels the same way about the goal setting process, especially setting and hitting financial goals. Raise your hand if you've ever set a financial goal that you didn't hit. Me. I'll raise my hand. I have. I want you to know that if you're in this camp, if you're like, I'm constantly setting financial goals for myself, but then for some reason I never hit them and you're just feeling really discouraged and overwhelmed and frustrated with the financial goal setting process, I feel you, but I've also got you in this video. I actually approach the goal setting process differently than most. I know the popular thing that we're all used to hearing about the goal setting process is setting SMART goals. And while I do think that the SMART process is okay, I ultimately think that for any goal you have to dive deeper than that. For me and what I teach my students and clients is there's five main things that you always need to be thinking about with any goal, which we're going to walk through in this video, but I'm also going to be giving you the number one thing that is absolutely necessary that you have to do to actually hit your financial goal that most people do not do, which is why so many people are not successful in hitting the financial goals that they set for themselves. So let's start with what those five questions are. I'm going to bring you back to the third grade because these questions are really, really easy. The questions that you always need to be asking yourself are what, when, how, why, and who. Now, the first two questions are by far the easiest. We're going to start with those, the what and the when. The what of your goal is simply what are you trying to do? And there's always going to be a dollar amount that is attached to the what part of your goal. So for a financial goal, the what could be, I want to save up a $3,000 emergency fund. I want to pay off $30,000 of student loan debt. I want to save up $20,000 for a down payment on the home. The what is simply what you're trying to do. And the win piece of your goal is the time bound piece of your goal. The win is when do I want to accomplish the goal by? So I recommend having a specific, a very specific timeline in mind and actually having a date that you are working towards. And what we're going to do is we're going to combine the what and the when. So an example would be, I want to pay off my $30,000 of student loan debt by December 31st, 2022. Now, like I said, the what and the when are the easy parts of the goal. Then we move to the how. The how is the part of your goal that your brain is going to most want to fixate on. This is something that I like to call how greed. We're so greedy for the how. Once you know the goal that you want to accomplish and when you want to accomplish it by, the next logical question that your brain is going to fixate on is, but how? How am I going to do that? So here are my best tips for the how. The first thing that you need to know is you need to know your monthly contribution amount. This is the amount that you're going to have to contribute to your goal every single month to achieve the goal in the time that you want to achieve it in. All you're going to do to figure this out is you're simply going to take the what and divide it by the when in months. So if the what is that you have $30,000 of student loan debt and the win is that you have 30 months to get there, then you know that your monthly contribution amount is going to be $1,000 a month right? $30,000 divided by 30 months. Once you know your monthly contribution amount, this is by far the most important part. Okay. So if you've ventured off, come back to me. And this is also the part that 90% of people do not do, which is why so many people are not successful in hitting their financial goals. Any financial goal that you set for yourself, you have to make the money needed to hit the goal 
a priority in your spending plan. What I teach my students is that your money needs to have a priority. This means that there are some expenses that are more important than others. So the priority that I teach is this. I teach first your basic needs and necessities. That's what comes first with your money. Just keeping yourself alive is the most important thing. After that, I teach hit and meet your minimum debt obligations. This ensures that you're never falling behind on any of your obligations. But after that, the third priority is what I call paying yourself first. Well, listen, I should say, I don't call it this. Pretty much everyone in the money industry calls it this. I shouldn't act like I came up with that term because I did it. But the third step is paying yourself first. And that's where this part comes in. What I want you to do is I want you to cover your needs meet your minimum debt obligations, and then I want you to pay yourself first through funding whatever financial goal it is that you are working on. Now, let me tell you what most people do. Most people set a financial goal, and what they'll do is they won't make any room for the goal within their spending plan. They won't prioritize the money that's needed to hit the goal. So what they do is they go out and they spend, 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 and whatever is left over, that's what gets put towards the goal, which in most cases is not much, if anything at all. This is why so many people are unsuccessful at hitting financial goals. What we're gonna do is we're going to reverse that. So we're gonna fund your financial goal. We're gonna pay yourself first and then whatever is left over after that, we will go and spend and have fun with. One other thing that I want you to think of when you're focused on the how part of your goal is just setting yourself up with a solid financial foundation before you're going into a financial goal. I see this a lot with my clients that, for instance, they'll want to tackle paying off their student loans, but they have absolutely nothing in savings. You have to walk before you run. And so when you're looking to tackle any financial financial goal, always be asking yourself the question, do I have the financial building blocks laid that I need to in order to tackle this goal full force? Essentially what I want you to do is I want you to eliminate any obstacles for yourself that you can ahead of time. So if you want to pay off debt, I recommend having at least a couple thousand dollars in savings before you tackle that goal. There's no point in you going and trying to attack your debt with no money saved because it's really not a matter of if, but when something is going to come up that you're gonna need money for. And what we don't want is you going back into debt to pay for the expense, which is just gonna set you farther back on the progress with your goal. So for the how, there's two things here. Pay yourself first, lay the financial building blocks that are needed. Then after that, we're gonna move on to the why and to the who. Your why, you hear this a lot, but with anything you want to do, you want to have your why behind it. Why is it that you want to become a homeowner? Why is it that you want to pay off your student loans? I actually learned this process of why through Dean Graziosi, and he teaches this concept of going seven layers deep with your why. A lot of us, when we first think about our why, it's going to be something very high level, very surface level coming from our brains. It's probably going to be something like, oh, I want time freedom. I want financial freedom. Time freedom and financial freedom, although they sound really nice and sexy, they're not going to keep you focused and motivated on your why. You have to have a why that is more heart-centered versus more mind-centered. So he teaches a process of going seven layers deep with your why. You start with just the first layer of your why, and then you continue asking why, 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 seven times. And the deeper that you go in your why, you will essentially move from your head centered why to your heart centered why. And that is a practice that I recommend that you do and that I learned from him. So you're going to have your why of why you want to accomplish this goal, which is going to keep you focused and motivated moving forward. The last and probably one of the most important out of all five of these, which is why I save the best for last, is the who. A lot of people do not think about this aspect of goal setting. And I know it sounds cheesy and I know it's cliche. The best part of the goal setting process is not the arriving, it's the becoming. It's who do I need to become? Who is the type of person that I need to be in order to hit this goal? 
I can tell you for me and my husband, when we were going through the process of paying off $98,000 of student loans and credit card debt, the person that I was at the beginning of that journey was not the same person who I had to become by the end of that journey to get the debt paid off. And a lot of people don't think about this, but I encourage you to always be focused on the who and asking yourself, who is the person that I need to become in order to hit this goal? And I can tell you right now that the difference between who you are now and who you're going to be when you're hitting the goal is all going to be up here with your thoughts and your beliefs because your thoughts and beliefs are the catalyst for everything you feel, everything you do, every result that you ultimately create. So those are the five questions that you need to be asking with any financial goal that you wanna go out and set and hit. Let's recap super quick. You're gonna start with the what and the when. What do you want to accomplish by when? Then you're gonna move on to the how. You're gonna start by figuring out what is the monthly contribution that I need to make towards this goal. You're gonna figure that out by simply dividing the what by the win. After you have that monthly contribution amount, you are going to make that monthly contribution amount a priority with your money. You're going to fund your financial goals. You're going to pay yourself first, and then you're going to live and work your life and expenses around whatever is left. Again, this is the key point to hitting any financial goal that you set for yourself. After that, you're going to do more of the foundational mindset work for the goal by figuring out the why behind your goal and also figuring out who you need to become, what type of person do I need to be who's going to hit this goal. Lastly, like I always do, I want to point you to two podcast episodes that can really help you dive deep into the financial goal setting process. The first episode that I want to point you to is episode four of my podcast, which is titled how to set and hit financial goals. I walk you through in that episode, these five questions, but in a lot more detail. So if you really want to dive deeper here, listen to episode four. The other episode that I want to point you to is episode 25 which is actually a really fun episode titled Impossible Money Goals. And that is an episode where I walk you through the process of setting and hitting goals that stretch you, that seem impossible, they seem out of the realm of what you're currently capable of creating, but how to make mindset shifts so that you can set and hit impossible money goals. All right, my loves, that is what I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and it was impactful. Please let me know which one of the five questions in the comments below was most helpful and insightful to you. I love you all so much and I will see you in the next video.